now with us and I'm so sorry to do this to you but I'm going to invite you to sit down here with us and tell us a bit what has been your experience in using evidence to drive policy. Thank you Marina, thank you to the panel and thanks everybody. Um, I am a scientist myself, I'm a neurobiologist, I've been doing research, basic research in a laboratory for almost three decades and a year ago I decided to run for Congress, so I'm a congressman now. And I do share the frustration of every scientist who wants to communicate a message to a non-specialized audience. And I guess that is the point that we want to address here. Um, how do I, for example, explain someone who doesn't understand basic uh, scientific language what the molecular mechanism of Alzheimer's is and why that should be relevant to the public health? It's very difficult. So what you guys are doing is fantastic in terms of uh, putting together the information, setting up the networks, and the collaboration that you need to do in order for this to be a global initiative. But the main problem still seems to be how do I communicate it? And it is essentially a communication problem, a science communication problem. You need, and I would say in my, my personal experience, you need to work on scientific culture, you need to work on environmental culture and uh, you need to work on research culture. One of the things we learned from the pandemic was, um, yes, we need to listen to science, but many of our medical doctors in Peru would not listen to science. They were doing evidence-based approaches, not evidence-based approaches. So they were telling you things like, yes, I've seen 200 patients and I know what to do with this pandemic. And we have the world record in terms of deaths per million in Peru because we wouldn't listen to science. So that's one main problem in the medical community, if I want to be critical. Um, in terms of society itself, um, in Peru at least, and I think this reflects the situation in Latin America, um, we don't really know what science is good for as, as a country, as peoples, right? We think that science is this microphone, it's a cell phone, it's an airplane, but it's not science, it's technology. We don't understand that knowledge can actually provide answers. But for us to understand that as a society, we really need, I think we also need champions. We need science champions, medical champions, people who are charismatic, who know how to translate this into simple words and go out there and reach out for people in the media and so on. And this is a training that we usually do not have. So this is a skill that we need to work on. And I could go on and on, um, but uh, yeah, they're gonna kick us out. So well, one last thing. Um, in terms of politics and politicians, you also have to understand that your average politician also does not understand science. And what they want is just a very concrete indicator, a very concrete recommendation. They will read these bulletins, but they will not understand much. They want to know how much that will cost the country, for example. And so uh, the task is, is daunting, it's not so easy. Uh, you have it much better in developed countries than, than we do, but certainly we look up to you solutions you come up with, but I think part of the, just to close, part of the challenge is to get involved. I would love to see you guys being involved sooner or later in politics or in activism, because if, if nobody can do the, the, the job better than you guys can do. Thank you so much. Those were quite inspiring words. Is it on? Yeah. Quite inspiring words, so thank you so much for that. And with this, we're going to just close the panel and thank all of the panelists as well for this and to you for staying. And if you have any further ideas, if you have any thoughts or stories of success, do share it with us because we need inspiration. We need to know what the way forward is. Thank you very much all.